The Hub is presented to you by Calvo Enterprises Inc. There's a new place and a new way of getting a lab test in Guam. A company called Worksite Labs has opened its doors. It operates on a decentralized laboratory model meant to bring full-service labs where they're needed most, says founder and CEO Gary Frazier. Worksite looks to set up shop in locations that are more convenient for patients, such as their first patient service center at the Dededo Payless. Its main lab will be at the Guam Regional Medical City in the coming months, and that, says Frazier, will help set them apart as they plan to bring in the lab equipment to process tests that previously had to be sent off island. Cutting down that turnaround time will save precious days or weeks that are important for patients. Coming up, our conversation with Worksite Lab's CEO, Gary Frazier. Hey everyone and welcome to The Hub. I'm Nestor Lecondo. Thanks for joining us. Uh, our guest this week is Gary Frazier, who is the founder and CEO of a company called Worksite Labs. Gary, thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me, Nestor. First of all, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and then tell us about uh, your company, Worksite Labs. So I'm a recovering hospital administrator. I uh, have about 20 years uh, in the healthcare industry. Most of the time I was running hospitals, um, California, Chicago, uh, uh, Arizona, and, and just kind of moved around the healthcare industry doing business development strategy and physician alignment um, over the last almost 20 years in the industry. Um, I am a Southern California native. Uh, born and raised in uh, Los Angeles area, and uh, and obviously my career because of healthcare being a, a global thing, I've traveled all over the place. But I've always um, stayed and lived and called Southern California home. All right, and so you started Worksite Labs. How did that all get started, and what is Worksite Labs? You know, I've I've told this story a, a, a lot of, uh, over the last three years. Um, so Worksite Labs is a a decentralized laboratory uh, testing company. And I specifically use the word decentralized because the way the industry works today is very consolidated and centralized. So, you know, uh, a, a big company would normally have 4,000 tests um, and they'd have a warehouse the size of 50,000, 70,000 square feet. And they'd fly specimens from around the country into that lab because economies of scale uh, means that they will make more money, right? Um, a decentralized approach is to have a smaller uh, lab, but be able to be in more places and therefore you'd improve the service and the time that it takes for a specimen to go from the patient to the lab and then vice versa with the results. Um, but it means that you're not gonna be able to do 4,000 things. You really have to choose uh, the top you know, 100, 200 to 300 things. Um, and so Worksite Labs, the business model was based on that. The ability to say, well, we know that 90% of the patient population really only need these 150 or 250 tests. And so that means that we don't have to be the, 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 the end all be all for everything. We really just have to make sure that we're serving the population's needs in this particular place or that particular place. So we began to put together smaller labs that were customized, if you will, for the needs of a particular community. So a rural area in central California or a, a, an area in mid-state or upstate New York versus a place like Guam, they all have unique needs. So we would be able to customize a lab for the unique needs of the region and also improve the service and be in more places. So uh, that's what Worksite Labs is. If that makes any sense, uh, you can ask questions, of course. Um, and um, you had, did you ask me how we started as well? Did I hear that? Yes, I did. I did. So so we started uh, really in early 2020 um, when the larger uh, labs could not keep up with the the COVID testing is, is really what happened. And, you know, my background being a hospital administrator, I ran several hospital departments, including laboratories. And, you know, I'd get calls from some of my hospital administrator friends with the dilemma that they were faced with when it took 10 days, 20 days to get back results. And um, one of them was uh, a couple of them, uh, but one of them was a jail. Another one was Hawaiian Airlines, believe it or not, um, when Hawaii was shut down. 
And they said, what do we do? You know, do you have any ideas? And I said, you know, we can put together a smaller operation that focuses just on what your needs are, which at the time was COVID. Um, and, and we'll make it a high complexity lab. Um, we'll put it in an RV. We'll put it in a shipping container because, you know, we could put it in any facility and we'll put it in your, in your parking lot. We'll put it near the work site, which was the point. That's how we named ourselves. We'll put it near the work site where people need us. And um, that's how it started in 2020. By early 2021, we were in 20 different states. Um, we had uh, upwards of 10 different laboratories, and we had uh, more than 26 different phlebotomy and draw stations. And um, we decided that we would take that model and expand the menu from COVID to all of the other tests that primary care physicians needed and the community need, um, and it worked. And we've been growing and flourishing uh, over the last three years on that model ever since. And in your due diligence for, for Guam and determining what sort of 150 to 200 tests um, should be um, specific for Guam, uh, how, do, how do we compare to other communities? Are there some um, unique tests that are, you know, uh, that you came up with for Guam? Yeah, when we're talking about primary care, so 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 let me for the the non healthcare folks. So the hospital care is called acute care, and there's a very specific need that hospitals have, which we don't serve because we don't have to, because hospitals have their own labs. So that's number one, right? And then there's all the rest of us, many of us who are well, um, you know, between certain ages where we don't see the doctor very often. Um, it's primary care. It's what you're going to your clinic for. That's the compendium that we really like to focus on. And now we're talking about, well, what, what are, what does the population look like, right? What are the lifestyle differences in this population versus another? So I will tell you that Guam looks a lot like the America, you know, the U.S. South, you know, Mississippi, Alabama, you know, where you have people who, uh, is, it's a high prevalence of diabetes, um, you know, they're, you know, it's, it's, it's most, it's a lot of lifestyle driven, what people eat, what their exercise regimen is, how much they smoke. And so the primary care physicians and the specialists that serve those kind of populations are very similar here to Guam, where you have endocrinology, which, which is for diabetes, right? You have a, a large, uh, primary care population. You have folks that are doing surgeries around those types of conditions. And therefore the kind of labs that they order are unique to a, a population like this. Um, obviously, you know, everybody needs to do their regular checkups and have a blood panel that covers their cholesterol levels and things like that. So those are some of the basics, but yeah, we that's what we saw here. Um, the other thing is the is somewhat isolation, right? You're, 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 you're far away and um, in places like this, it's hard to also recruit doctors, specific, specifically specialists. Um, it's hard to recruit new businesses into a market like this because of how far it is. So, you know, the other opportunity here was that um, we felt like creating more access just by itself is also an improvement, right? Adding a second lab into a, 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 a you know, to a, a region that has only one um, could only be a benefit to the population here and the consumers. Yeah, I was going to ask you about what are some of the unique challenges, such as, you know, getting supplies or stuff like that. And I think you kind of touched on that uh, just now. Yeah, you know, and the good news is that the world, because of the Internet, has become smaller. So the supply chain is global, right? Um, you don't have to get everything from the United States. You can get it from, you know, Singapore, you know, Japan and other places like that. So um, and since we came up during the travel uh, testing, you know, phase of the pandemic, we've forged a lot of partnerships around the world to where we have a pretty good supply chain. All right, we got to take a quick break. Uh, we're talking with Gary Fraser, who is the uh, founder and uh, CEO of a company called Worksite Labs. And we'll talk a little bit more about Worksite Labs right after this. Okay, yeah, we're back and we're talking to Gary Frazier, who is the CEO and founder of Worksite Labs. Gary, talk a little bit about a little more about your patient service center and what the, those are. So patient servicing centers are where the patients actually go to have their blood drawn or to provide a urine specimen or any other type of sample that is then taken to the lab. 
Um, the lab itself is not a patient servicing center. That's just, you don't go there, your, your specimens go there. Uh, so our, we have, you know, we'll, here in Guam, we are starting with three and our plan is to, by early next year, be expanded to at least six. Um, so we're starting in the higher populated areas. Um, so we're opening, we actually have opened this week. We were supposed to open the week just before the typhoon. And then of course the governor's orders uh, prohibited that from happening. Uh, but um, we eventually opened our Dedado location, which is um, strategically uh, partnered with and 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 in the Payless uh, grocery store. Um, actually, it's 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 the part of the store where the super drug is. If you guys know know the area, and so it is strategically placed next to the pharmacy because people go there for pharmacy, and now they can go there for, to pick up their prescriptions as well as get their labs drawn. Um, our second and third locations will be at the uh, Payless in Jigo. Same kind of setup where we're right, we're, go, we're gonna be right across from where the pharmacy is. So it's convenient for the patients to, as they're shopping, they pick up their, their, their uh, prescriptions and they can also um, bring their orders for their labs there. And then our third location will be at Guam Medical Plaza, which is the surgery, the ambulatory surgery center that's here in town as well. We'll literally be right at the entrance of uh, Guam Medical Plaza. So it's really convenient to find. It's convenient for people who are mobility um, or, or um, uh, impaired where they can just be you know, dropped off or in a wheelchair so they don't have to go upstairs. Um, so we, we chose to start in the North because this is a growing higher populated area. Um, and then we will gradually expand to the South um, strategically picking areas that have the most need in that way as well. I imagine um, you also met with a lot of doctors to so let them know that you're coming to Guam and you're going to be providing this service. Can you talk a little bit about what um, their reactions were? Um, very welcoming. Uh, so, you know, this journey started a year ago, in fact. Uh, my first trip to Guam was last July, July 2022, uh, when I made my first trip to Guam. I've come quarterly ever since, and our first meetings were with the medical community. Um, we met with leadership at AMC, FHP, IHP, uh, 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 Seven Day Adventist. You know, I can rattle off more, but we we specifically wanted to talk to the physicians because they're the ones that know above all else whether or not this made sense. And I can tell you that um, they were extremely happy um, because this just means more options for them, more options for their patients. Um, it means that you know, the service level should improve. Again, you know, when there's more, and, and it's going to sound, you know, very businessy, but when there's more competition in, in the industry, it, it's really, really good for those that use that particular service, including the doctors. So they've been welcoming us with open arms. What did, what did, you, what did you learn from them? What did you hear from them in terms of what um, the challenges are and what they'd like to see of improvement with? So the biggest one was really about how many new tests we could bring on island. That was the first thing they would talk about. They'd say, look, you know, um, there's all this stuff that everybody does, but there's these 10 or these 20, right? Each one was different. But they say these are the things that have to be shipped to Hawaii or California or some other place. Can you build some of this into your menu so that they don't have to go off island and we don't have to wait, you know, two weeks, four weeks for results to get back? And so it helped to inform us as to what types of equipment we needed to build into our brand new lab that would add some extra value versus just the regular tests that we would be doing as well. And so they were very helpful in that regard. So that was one of the challenges, our tests that go off island. Um, you know, the other one was really about just hours of operations, you know, basic needs like, hey, can you be open at 6 a.m.? You know, because there's lines down the street at some of these other places. Um, you know, can you add more than one phlebotomy chair, right? So that there's there's more there's more uh, space there for our patients. Um, and and then the other stuff is more technical, like can we integrate into their IT system, <laughs> you know, so that they can get the results. Sure. Um, I know that you've also partnered with the Total Guam Foundation. Um, talk about that. Tell, well, first of all, tell us for those who are not familiar with the Total Guam what that is and then how you partnered with them. Yeah, so so those who are not familiar, so Todu Guam is a Todu Guam Foundation is a not for profit here on the island. Um, they 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 work with volunteer physicians, volunteer uh, nurse practitioners, and other providers to go out into the community and serve uh, the populations that don't have 
insurance at all. Um, many of them are what we what we call uh, different levels of the federal poverty line. So 200, you know, 100, uh, you know, below that level of the federal poverty line and really just, you know, um, impoverished, right? Um, communities of the island. And so they have a mobile clinic where they go to these places because many of these people don't have a way to get around. Um, they also have a clinic in town for people who can. Um, but yeah, it, it's a it's a it's a good not for profit serving the community with uh, clinical needs, you know, focused on women's services as well as a few other specialties that have the most need. Um, we have decided to partner with them because part of our mission, our primary mission is to create more access for all people. But part of our mission is to make sure that as we're working with people who have insurance and who can get to the doctor, you know, ordinary people, um, you know, we, what we need to do is also lend a, a hand to those who are, um, you know, uh, you know, low income, uninsured, um, or, or worse, right? And so we could come here and try to do it on our own, or we could plug into organizations like Total Guam who are already doing it and have been doing it. So we're partnering with them to provide them with laboratory services and mobile phlebotomy services as they go out to the community. Yeah. So you have had an opportunity to go out there and, and meet with uh, patients. And I'm wondering if you could share some stories of uh, what their reaction has been to your service. Yeah. So on this trip, uh, I came, my wife and I, she came with me on this trip. We, uh, we came into town on Saturday evening and Total Guam uh, had an outreach to uh, in Jigo, really way north in Jigo um, uh, Sunday. So woke up Sunday, put on our work clothes, met up with um, eight of our Worksite Labs employees that are here on island and um, went to a place that they call Zero Down. Um, and, you know, you're talking about people that were already, I'll say, suffering uh, pre-typhoon. Um, really hard hit because that's where the typhoon centered was over the north. And um, we spent the whole day uh, canvassing the community, um, you know, passing out food, water, clothes, and also the mobile clinic was there. So we had our nurse staff and our phlebotomy staff there. Um, you know, we'd go door to door and ask if anybody had medical needs. And if they did, we'd either have some folks come to their, their place of residence, because it's hard to call it a home when you don't have a roof, um, or, or, you know, pick them up and take them to the mobile clinic if it wasn't close by. So it was eye-opening. It was eye-opening um, to see that uh, kind of devastation. But it was also encouraging because I can tell you that they weren't at, in fact, some of us walking around looked like we were lost. And and, and one of the folks came out of their, their, their tents and asked if we were lost and if we needed help. And it's, it's like, no, we're here to help you, you know, and, uh, you know, here's, you know, would you like some water or some food? So we were really encouraged. All right. Uh, Gary, got to take one more break, but we'll be back to continue our conversation. Uh, please, everybody stay with us. All right, uh, we're back with Gary Frazier, who is the uh, founder and CEO of Worksite Labs. And Gary, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit more about um, the future. I know you, you've you come uh, up with this um, this business plan that seems to be pretty successful for you so far. Are there um, uh, innovations uh, in the future that you see? Yeah. Um, so, you know, my team, you know, when I started pontificating about the future, they start to worry because it means that I'm, you know, I'm going off on tangents of, you know, futuristic science and technology and things that we're not doing yet, but, but, you know, I want to invest in. Um, so, so for, so for me, it's really important to go the extra mile to start moving things out of the lab and to the bedside. And so what that means is that, they, you know, most of these tests take long or, or, you know, or cost more because you have to do them on specialized equipment with specially trained people inside of a specialized building. But to the extent that there are technologies out there where you can just like the remember the uh, uh, the antigen test where, you know, it's just something you can do in your home. Imagine doing the equivalent of an antigen test, but for several other, other diseases, several other conditions to where the physicians like a total Guam don't need a lab. They can actually go into people's homes and actually do the diagnosis right there. Um, so investing in those kind of technologies long term may not be great for, you know, the laboratory business per se. But if the goal is to do diagnostic testing 
and the goal is to create more access, then we should be in that space as well. And so for me, that's the next frontier. It's like one, we can put labs in parking lots and we can move things around the world. And that's great because that's mobile and it's portable and it helps. But the next frontier is, is investing in technologies that allow the physicians to be able to do things at the bedside that allows them to be able to start treating patients sooner and therefore save lives. So, you know, there's a lot of technology out there. I, I could start, if you want to get into science tech, science conversation, I can start telling you about them because they're pretty cool. But that really is at a high level um, where I see the future going on top of just putting our place, ourselves in places like Guam, um, maybe like Puerto Rico, you know, maybe, you know, going to places in Africa um, and just helping to build up infrastructure and create access where currently there's not as much. And I, and I gotta ask you this because AI has been permeating everything and it's it's really been, you know, a disruptor for so many different industries. Does AI factor into any of your industry? A little bit. So I think they've they've already started to use AI to do automated reads. So 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 when imagine a scientist or a, a pathologist who um, has to look at uh, you know an image on the screen of a particular pathogen, and then a human being, the pathologist, determines whether you're positive, you're negative, whether you have a particular disease or not. Well, they're training AI right now to basically do, you know, for the most common types of diseases, to be able to do those reads remotely, right? Um, and so, you know, it's it's still a far ways off because obviously at the end of the day, there's, there should be a human being uh, doing quality control <laughs> to make sure that when they read that you have a specific cancer or, or a specific, you know, uh, infectious disease like polio or something like that, because some places they're still suffering from that in third world countries. Um, a human being can lay their eyes on it to, to verify it. But one day um, there will be some common tests where... AI will likely be the ones determining whether or not it's a positive or negative. All right, let me ask you this because we do have a, a, a little bit of time and I'm just curious and not this, that this has anything to do with your specific uh, industry, but Elizabeth Holmes, the former founder of Theranos, uh, who purportedly wanted to revolutionize uh, blood testing by taking just a tiny sample, um, that turned out to be a fraud. I just want to get your reaction to her. Um, so <laughs> I'm not sure that, so let me back up. She was making up stories about something that she couldn't do. Um, I'm not sure that's any different is what I was going to say than any other fraudster in any other industry that basically is kind of like the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain, right? They're, they had everybody believing that they've got some magic, you know, uh, button or some silver bullet. And unfortunately, she didn't. And, you know, unfortunately for her investors, she had the skill to be able to persuade them all that she had something that she didn't. Um, as far as the science goes, you know, there is no single drop thing and there never was, which is which is has always been odd to those of us in healthcare. When we heard about Li Elizabeth Holmes and everything else, it was like, well, that's a pie in the sky dream. But guess what? If you can persuade some millionaires to give you some money, then there you go. So, um, you know, you know, we don't we, we have not created any ourselves, any new um, science per se. Right. Our business model, uh, a shift and our innovation and what's disruptive is our ability to be in more places by using a smaller menu of items. But we still, you know, the, the, the technology that's been out there for years, we buy from those suppliers and we buy from those manufacturers like Siemens and Abbott and everything else. So we so, you know, we're not inventing new science here. We're just creating new ways for the the, the population to access something that. Um, uh, is already, you know, out there, if that makes any sense. All right, Gary, we got a couple of minutes left. So I wanted to give you one uh, final opportunity to just uh, talk a little bit more about your company and uh, uh, wel act, welcome the uh, potential patients to uh, avail of your services. Yeah, honestly, I really just want people to know that, you know, we are here to create more access. We're here to, you know, lower prices, improve service, do all the things that cus customers and patients want, and including their doctors as well. And so to the extent that you all can come out to our Dedido site, um, and when we open GIGO, we want you to come out and say hi there. And when we open GMP, say hi there. And, you know, we have a, a calendar where we're going to be out in the community. So if we're in your village and you hear that we're in your village because you got the flyer, then come out and say hi to us there. I mean, we really are a people company. Um, 
it took me a year because a lot of that time was just learning about uh, the the Chamorro and, and, and the Guamanian people and understanding what the culture is here to make sure that we didn't trip up in that area. The science and the business side, we're already doing it in New York and California and Washington and all these other places. It really is about understanding the culture of the place that you're going in. And so I want the people here watching to know that um, that's the most important thing for us is making sure that we are serving the people here. Um, and um, the last thing is that we have a special website just for Guam. Uh, it's called guam.worksitelabs.com. I'll repeat that. It's guam.worksitelabs.com. So if you want to learn more about us, specifically about what we're doing in Guam, that's where you should go. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Good luck to you. Thank you. All Have right. Garrett Frazier, founder and CEO of Worksite Labs. I'm Nestor LeConto. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you again next week on The Hub.